obviously longer than an hour in duration. Firstly, replenish the liver glycogen first thing in the morning. This is if you want peak performance. So two to three hours prior, a lot of people, so particularly people doing triathlons when you've got to register at 6 to 7 a.m., a lot of people don't eat before an event. For performance, that'll actually be detrimental. If you can, a medium or high GI food, but low in fibre. This is the important thing for fat loss, okay? So glycogen synthase is the little enzyme in your body that turns glucose into glycogen. And this enzyme is very, very active immediately when you finish exercise. So this thing is ready to go to get any glucose that you eat and turn it into glycogen, which I'm sure you all get is a fantastic thing. For recovery, debatable for weight loss, but um, we'll stick to talking about recovery for the minute. So um, the longer you wait to eat after exercise, the less active this enzyme becomes. So what you need within 10 to 15 minutes of finishing exercise is a high GI carbohydrate. This is where all the footy clubs and all the sports places are giving snakes or Gatorades or something high GI directly after that training because then you get full glycogen replenishment. There is a debate for fat burning. Do we, so do you not eat anything and wait so that the body continues to burn fat? Or do you have enhanced that enzyme so that everything you eat thereafter will then go to glycogen replenishment? So, yeah. So, so when you're talking glycogen replenishment, that's to the muscles? And yes. that's why that's better for recovery so that yes. next time you're actually exercising. Exactly. Exactly. So in my opinion for both weight loss and recovery, this is the way to go. But some people are of the belief that if you don't eat, if you prolong eating, you'll continue to burn fat. But you won't be doing much the next day.